Hand side of t equals zero. We move to t equals whatever. And because we were able to move to the, the right hand side of t equals zero, you can see that the idea of that t equals plus x, you can see this idea that that's what makes you the money. We treated a probability distribution, which suggested that we have a high probability of making about a thousand dollars for a five a fifty dollar stop, twenty times our money. So in other words, I've got a risk reward that's absolutely out of this world. I'm seeing a probability in terms of the, the way it's setting up in terms of that calendar spread, which seems to be regression to the south side a little bit. A south side regression, right? So we had that calendar spread lined up. And the reason why we were able to get the edge on time was because at that stage, the dollar was still dropping. That's why we were able to get the edge, right? Because the dollar was still dropping. The oil price was still rising, but we were forecasting the dollar starting to rise. And therefore, we're able to make a future decision based on the fact that we think the dollar's probably going to start rising to get the sale on the books at 99.50s, a level that we already knew about because of the failed auction in the background, or at least the neutral auction in the background, we were able to guarantee that we were going to get a, a guaranteed premium at $99.50, and then we've just gone and made ourselves that $900, $800 that we told you we would make if we obviously stick around. Did anybody decide to take it? Or have we got a room full of nodding horses or nodding dogs again? Everybody nods along and says, yes, 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 no, I never took it. Yes, 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 no, I never took it. Yes, 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 no, I never, never took it. The nodding dog syndrome is probably the biggest problem we've got. Because people always acknowledge that it's a great trade, but where's your trade? I know it's a great trade. I made the money. I'm not going to go out and spend it on a new jacket or spend it on some, I don't know, some Albanians or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out something, right? So, at the end of the day, I've made the money. Did you make the money? If the answer is no, and you trade oil, the next question is, why? Why didn't you? Not for me. I'm not interested in the answer why. Well, I'm actually interested in the answer why, but the answer is better for you to be, <laughs> to be interested in, right? The answer is better for you to then say, why didn't I make the money? Why didn't I get that sell trade on for a thousand, nearly a thousand dollars? What was wrong with me? What was wrong with you? What were you not seeing? And then fix it. So what was the next one, guys? This one's now been. You don't have to get upset about it. You don't have to get angry about it. It's been. I've made my money. You didn't. But why didn't you make the money? Fix it. Don't just nod along. Don't just agree. Fix the damn thing. There's too many people agree and then don't do anything about it. And then when I ask the next question, well, did you get the next one? No. Well, why didn't you get that one either? Eh, because I'm an idiot. Because I never bothered fixing the last problem that I had. So when we understand this, you can see that we had the biggest volume of the session so far, except for the cash open. We had a measured move to the upside, so we had a level two top line. We had a wholesale price. We had a diverging value line big diverging value line, we had a bid on the dollar, you had everything you could ever want on that trade, everything you could ever want in that trade was visible on that chart. 
the only thing that's not visible is your execution. So you gotta get it, guys. You gotta, gotta, gotta get it. And there's gonna be a whole room of two or three newbies, guys. Kim's going to do a new class, so we can expect to see another two or three new people in, guys. We always know that we always get about two or three new people joining. They're all coming in to give you a showing up. They'll all be pushing their stochastic over bought and oversolds. So you're going to have to step up, guys. Show them that you are on top of these trades. Otherwise, they'll be looking at it saying, my God, these guys have been in for 26,000 years and they still miss easy trades. What kind of classroom is this? What kind of classroom is this? We want to tell them this is a bloody good classroom. That's what we want to tell them. Alrighty, so we got a bottom edge a rejection, a level two rejection on our opening sell on equities. If you took the sell with me at ninety at thirty nine, you got a low price of at thirty one thirties. So you made four hundred and fifty dollars on the opening sell. We did tweet. Uh, that we were expecting some limits to come in on the short side. We got a perfect excuse for that. And we got a level two cap buyers area, which you already knew about because we uh, uh, talked about it earlier, cap buyers. Uh, so it jammed into the cap buyers, ran the stops, gave us our exit price. And obviously the uh, value had uh, flipped at that stage. But the value flipped on the uh, yields as well on the dollar. Remember, we started to buy some dollars. So for that reason, I didn't actually buy the 31s. So I've got a I've got a good excuse for not buying the 31s because I was buying dollars. If I'm buying dollars, I don't think I should be holding on to my uh, position, obviously, in equities as a buyer here. So that's obviously a, either a hedge trade that I could have taken. I could have went, uh, obviously, as a hedge trade, I'd have been long equities, long dollars, and I would have ended up with a double alpha, but you don't know that at the time. So I just closed out my short equity trade here, and the price exploded north. Now, obviously, when the price explodes north, I've now got a problem. I'm long dollars, so I'd rather be selling equities. If I'd rather be selling equities, I can see there's a problem trying to sell equities. Everything's hideous at this stage, isn't it? Everything is hideous. So how the hell can I get a short equity trade on this? So for me... I am not on equities at the moment. I'm quite happy to be on the sidelines, and I'm going to wait for something a little bit better to show up, whether that's a buy on a spring or whether it's a sell at the top line at 44s. I don't yet know. I'm just going to have to wait and see. One trade on the S&P for me so far. One winner. Still long, uh, still long uh, dollars at the bottom edges here, looking pretty sexy. Um, you can see the overall shape of this uh, long dollar position. Uh, you can see that uh, the long dollar position really has caused the uh, Australian dollar to run off the top edges quite aggressively. So obviously that's one of the big reasons why I'm not that keen on, uh, on the S&P. Now, there's a bit of a challenge with this. And this is why we have to learn about lines, isn't there? Because the Aussie dollar and the Canadian dollar are commodity currencies. Commodity currencies are based around the concept of inflation, of course. If inflation starts dropping, it means there's probably a drop in commodity prices. If there's a drop in commodity prices, that might put some sell pressure into the ABCs. And the sell pressure on the ABCs could be bullish for equities. So the A's and the, A, the, A's and the C's could be selling as equities rally, correct? Correct. So there we go. Different type of scenario, different type of strategy. During an inflation narrative, the ABCs have to be very carefully watched. They can become a negative correlation to equities at times. Not the pound. The pound doesn't become a negative correlation because the pound is, is part of the ABCs in terms of risk, but it is not part of the ABCs in terms of commodity currencies. So in that kind of environment, would it be better to take a look at sterling for a sentiment narrative? Yes, it would be. And you can see that sterling has been dropping. So now that I know that sterling is dropping in the background, I'm obviously very, very concerned about higher priced equities being a little bit of, a little bit of an edge, a little bit problematic. OK, so that's why I'm currently not uh, involved in the long side of equities for the squeeze higher.